Hello and welcome back guys to the champion base show matches and we have Fat Camp, yes, their name is Fat Camp, versus TT Dragons once again. So the first ban will be Fizz. We did see uh, Fat Camp yesterday, I believe, in the qualifiers of the TT Esports Cup. And uh, yep, they did. They performed pretty well. They have a different person now standing in. We had Sunday the admin once again for them, and they did get knocked out. But we will have tons of damage once again, and Electric Guess will be the person standing in for, uh, for Sunday this time. And once again, Oriana will be banned out. Very, very strong pick at the moment. That's, um, yeah, and also, I'll be casting with my wonderful co caster Spuddington. Hello again. My ability to watch the stream or to cast anything at the moment is somewhat limited by the fact it is crashing. So, um, I'll yeah, be right issue. with you. Issue. So, so far, we have Fizz Oriana, Malphite as the bands. What do you think of these so far? Mm, it's Fizz seems to be a targeted ban. Uh, I think Nekoda plays it, doesn't he? Or, or am I going mad? Uh, no, Duduk, Duduk, Duduk. I'm being stupid. Yeah. Um, and obviously, uh, Fizz in the right hands is extremely difficult to deal with. And, you know, uh, there's no reason for them to deal with it if they don't have a very specific comp in mind. Malphite, hard engage, shuts down so many top lane ADs, and just all around really useful. Oriana, I'm slightly surprised that she has quite a lot of utility, but compared to Morgana, I'd have said she just doesn't perform as well in pretty much all the same areas. I guess she doesn't have the same kind of... Morg doesn't have the same kind of brutality in a lane where she could just bully you out with the ball and her auto attack har harasses. Maokai, very strong early ganks, and Kennen just all around very safe and fits in with a lot of team compositions. Yeah, I'm definitely. So the first pick will be uh, Ari for Fat Camp so far. And it'll be Talon picking that up. He is, of course, their jungler. He'll probably swap around in the end. We'll have Tristana being on the pummel team, which is T2 Dragons. And it'll be. Oh, he's just swapping around. It's fine. I don't know. Oriana is a very strong pick at the moment. She offers the same sort of utility in the same way that maybe Ash does. It's not so much that she just poops out damage like a lot of APs do. It's just she has the utility. That being the ultimate and the movement speed steroid and then you know, running away as well. She's really strong in lane, as you mentioned. Like a lane bully. Yeah, but that's why I kind of drew the comparison to Morgana. Because... Oriana, Morgana has a lot of utility as well, in that she has that huge uh, Soul Shackle stun which can completely break apart a team, and she has the Black Shield which is just so good. So good that ability. Just blocking all CC and it fits with so many different characters who want to be able to just dive in and kill everybody. And, you know, just all around extremely useful spell and binding and pretty, pretty decent damage and a magic resist shred. And she's also a very safe pick, whereas Oriana tends to be a bit more aggressive in a lane, more likely to push it out and, um, well, push it out unsafely. Uh, but, uh, yeah. That's just my personal opinion. I wouldn't be able to uh, follow it up, I suppose, in an actual game, especially if I was playing against any of these people. Um. Yeah, for sure. So, we do have the Corky definitely picked up, and then Lee Sin, and that will be the Tristana. Oh, instantly with the Malzahar, very interesting. So a lot of interesting picks. Mainly I'm looking at the Malzahar right now because Malzahar has received some of the couple tweaks more than anything, just to make him more fluid. But yeah, yeah it looks like he's coming back into it. And those Voidlings really do hurt, as I found out yesterday. <laughs> yesterday. Yeah. They fixed the Voidling pathfinding, didn't they? And they made it so he can cast Null Zone while moving, which mm. makes it so much easier to land that extremely powerful combo he has of Null Zone and then holding you in it with Nether Grasp. Yeah, definitely. And he's just got a lot of burst in lanes. Like as soon as he hits six, that's he can has the potential to hundred to zero you with a full combo and ignite. I mean, it's a lot of damage, just base. Yeah. And with the voidling as well, which will always target the person being metagrassed, auto attacked, or if they have the malefic visions on them. So that's uh, that's very very nice and an easy way to control your voidlings, which always very nice to yeah. have. Obviously, as we drew the comparison yesterday, it doesn't have the same sort of utility in the way that you can control a mod pet, but still very strong. Potentially the Shyvana pickup, potentially the Shen pickup. A Blitzcrank has been picked up already for TT Dragons, and um, that's very interesting because Talon, I know, plays an extremely strong Shyvana. Not quite sure of the same level as Dying Prox, but it's pretty close from what I've seen. It's very, very, very strong, and uh, was tower diving from level 3 yesterday. Absolutely insane. Yeah, I suppose they're waiting to see if Spirit of May, if Lee Sin is definitely going to be the top lane, or whether it's going to be some other pick here, and then they can either they can swap around 
Shivana and um, Shen as the top laners. And it's going to be Irelia top. I don't know what I don't know what it's like for Irelia versus Shivana, but I have a feeling Irelia versus Shen is one of those lanes where Irelia can farm, and you really do not want a farmed Irelia. She just becomes this ridiculously angry, tanky death machine. You just can't seem to shut down. It's, yeah, it's awkward, and, basically. Yeah, uh, yeah, I have to agree with that. They have a lot of. They're really strong mid and early game, but then you have Irelia as well, who's kind of scales towards the sort of end mid game and then late game. Seems very odd to have that sort of Irelia in that mix, but even so, it's a very solid matchup, and she can just peel as well, I guess. And she's strong when she gets out of lane phase. Go ahead. Uh, Tristana is probably one of the strongest late game hyper carries, actually. Because she just gets that extreme range and that amazing attack speed steroid. It takes her a long time to reach that point. Like, she has this strange power curve where she's really strong at the beginning because her abilities have high base damage, then really weak mid game because her abilities fall off and they don't scale with AD, so they're not really worth anything anymore, and she's just an auto attacker that's not got very much damage. And then she gets late game where she just then has this huge range, huge damage, and is insanely useful again. But, you know, uh, if it did come to late game, I think they'd actually have a very solid comp because they'd have Blitzcrank, Malzahar, and B Sin to hold people, knock people up, silence them, keep them away from Tristana, who could then kill the entire team, while Irelia could die of any particular carry on the uh, enemy team. Yeah, definitely. So, once again, I'd like to remind you guys that we do have. The chance to win a parachute jump today if you donate one dollar or more to Champion Base. If you donate five dollars or more, you will be in the chance to win one of 150 t-shirts, support or feed. You can check that out on championbase.com and you will be jumping out of a plane with Ocelot, Momo, Nif and Nekodem. Not as bad as it sounds, you won't. You will have a parachute, hopefully, I believe. I mean, I'm not sure if we're uh, supplying that or you have to get one yourself and uh, that would be very awkward Would you like time. to go on a death dive? <laughs> But until after the break, guys, we'll be back in a minute. So stay tuned. We will have um, Fat Camp versus TT Dragons.
Hello and welcome back to the ChampionBase.com show matches for today, and I am joined by my co-cast Swillington. Go ahead, say hello. Hello. Once more. Once more under the bridge. Under the... Once under more. Under the bridge. Um, GGGRHF coming from Tristan. Always nice to see from TT Dragons, and they are a team who definitely likes to go for the sportsmanship, and immediately Glucose pulling out the white, that ugly Lee Sin skin. Which um, is very interesting. Chicken Lee Sin. It's quite a good <laughs> comparison. Let's let's take a look at Chicken Lee Sin. I mean, no, it doesn't look like a chicken. I I don't mind the Lee Sin skin. It's kind of like dignified in the respect that it's clearly uh, adhering to a particular code rather than just being like, well, I think this looks cool. Let's go with this. Sure. So you do put the aggressive ward down immediately, and that's kind of to be expected. I mean, better buff Nidalee or TT Dragons, as they are now known, always go for that aggressive ward, usually around the rave camp, but I think he wanted to go even deeper this time. Haha! <laughs> but yeah, yeah. look at this lead, WTF. Yep, I, I agree completely. Once again, oh, you it looks can see like... him? Oh, oh, wait, you're on that team. Damn it! But yeah, uh, that really aggressive ward gives them a lot of information because when the jungler inevitably goes to clear red buff, they see him there, they know where he started, they know where he's likely to be in a given amount of time. Basically means that ganks are much more easy to avoid. Looks like they're going to contest golems here. Yeah, and they do have the ward there. Has Cosq seen him? I don't think he has. There's four men right now on golems. I mean, they're very, very paranoid. Shyvana coming up, and it will be Glucose top of Shyvana, in fact. Of course, Talon will be in the jungle. Paul goes down, lands on Electric Guess. He will be flashing out. Now, following after on Spirit of Mage, will be out there with the rocket jumps, killing that one first. Judo coming in from the side as well, de delaying that red buff take by Talon. Are they going to stop him from doing it? Yes, they are. They will not be able to take it themselves, but even so, they are delaying him as long as possible. Cause Q, going to do something from the side. He has got all the deception, doing some damage on it to Judo. Talon. Looking to do something here as well. Only got the Vulper Blade, no CC right now. Turning around, actually, Broccoli and Spirit of Mage looking to do some damage onto Electric Guest. Rocket jump over the wall, and Broccoli will be there out of there along that uh, Dragon Wall Z. <laughs> yeah, the good thing about what they did there was they tied up a lot more members. They, they tied up four members of. Um... Oh, Broccoli disrupting Talon once again. I think, <sighs> is he going to be able to stop him from taking it? I mean, it's some pretty significant damage from Red. And Broccoli, Fist of Fury, Electric Guest coming up from the side as well. Corky is at bottom. Nexo coming over the wall, looking to try and take this. One. One two combo, not gonna happen, they will pick it up, Nekadov gonna get it with the help of Brookley. And Juduk also coming down just to try and stop the pressure from mid. Tons of damage coming back up once again. They are in a dodgy place. Nekadov has been caught taking a lot of their flashes over the wall. That was a successful invade. Juduk yeah. out of mana though, just trying to assist them and ward them off. Yeah, Malzahar doesn't have massive mana issues though because his malefic visions can restore them for him once he gets level two. Yeah, no, 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 you'll see him pushing the lane in and trying to get that. But that set Shen behind so much. He is going to be in a seriously difficult situation. He has no pots um, at, at any... Uh, at this stage. And, yeah. Oh, Judo has been caught by Tolo, and there goes the Shadow Dash. They're going to pick up First Blood very, very easily. And that was really, really great play. Nothing he could do really in that situation. Pop the flash. After that, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. Ironically, it was the fact that they had forced that that made him so. Ah, uh, that gave they gave Shen no alternative. Oh, Spirit of Mage diving on the Electric Guest with the Rocket Jump, massive burst damage, does not damage. Looking to follow this one up, goes in with the Valkyrie Broccoli there to try and defend. Flash goes out from both players, and Paul goes down saving him. Broccoli actually fits the Fury, doing quite a significant amount of damage. Helps creeps from the side as well. Broccoli. Does not have the power as yet, does not have level 2. Glucose, meanwhile, picking up the kill onto Irelia. Ah, so much <laughs> happening. Fast, fast action here. This is a lot of, a lot of ganks all over the map, actually. They're really, really trying to go for the aggression. Yeah. Well, not, not to the insane degree that we saw last game, but um, <laughs> that was literally insane. Uh, yeah. So, Shivana has pushed Irelia out of lane, I think? Yeah, I yes. think so. Yes. Uh, and that is a good thing, because I don't imagine that after a certain point Shivana will be able to duel Irelia, because pretty much no one can. Although Shivana is a strong duelist, I will get for that. And she needs to take an early advantage while she can get it, basically. 
Oh, Judah once again potentially out of position. He is going to juke down to the south. Charm lands. Oh. Oh, but they, no one thought way. it would. Yeah, like I'm not, I didn't think it was going to land. That was literally max range. And uh, Blitz Crank pulling that minion. Got him. So, yeah. Yeah. Salo heading up to top and potentially trying to get something done on to Irelia. I think he knows, however. Ross pushing up really hard against mm. Glucose, despite Glucose being significantly stronger at this point. And the E Talo looking for the dash. There's the flash in. Oh. Wow, that was kind of crazy. Yeah, what? What? Mechanics. Oh, that's genius. I didn't know that would happen. What happened wow. was that in the dash, he flashed right at the end, and the game hadn't registered that the Shadow Dash had ended at that point. So he was still in I will taunt whatever I touch mode. And he just so happened to touch Aurelia at the very end of his flash. Like, that requires real precision there. Like, ex like, I didn't even know that was possible, but that's extremely clever. Great use of the game mechanics. It just shows how well Talon, Talon knows the game mechanics. I mean, that was crazy good. He just like, okay, so it taunts anything that I'm touching. But that was just, yeah. yeah, as you said, precision and clever at the same time. I haven't seen something like that that was just mechanically adept. It was just yeah. really, really, really nice to, to watch. Wow. Impressed. Yeah. Very impressed. Very skilled. Meanwhile, I think, yeah, Shivana has made herself scarce because I think she's afraid that she's going to get Lee Sin ganked because when you're in a lane that you're trying to snowball, obviously the enemy is going to try and set it back by ganking themselves with their jungler. So she's taking the uh, safe route and gone back while it was pushed to her tower and picking up, ooh, what she picked up? Yeah, she's pick, she's going for a Wriggles. She's only got the Madrids and the Vamp Scepter at the moment. And a ward, obviously, because she wants to keep an eye out for Lee Sin, who is... I, I would expect he wants her. He wants he, he, well, he wants her dead, rather, um, which is you know natural. Um, lane snowball. You don't want. You don't really want a very fed Shivana because she does a deceptively huge amount of damage. Like she will just put out the damage necessary to kill a team if you let her, and she's actually very tanky with it. Oh, Judo want to get caught by Talo, massive burst from Cos Q. He did have just a mana just the amount of mana he needs for the entire burst. And that is once again a very dead mouse of heart. Now two and zero. Mm. Yeah, that vein is not gonna be going well for him. Typically, oh, Broth going very aggressive onto Glucose once again. No idea why he did that. Considering Glucose definitely has the advantage, level seven to level five. Not even got the transcendent blaze. Also, goes down by Glucose easily, picking that one up. Can I reconnect? Pause. Clicks and 15 S FPS. Yeah, that's a massive issue. Yeah, that's not fun to play as. Uh, but yeah. Wait, I can't even move the camera. Huh. No, but, you can't. Uh, yeah. Typically, when you're playing against an Ari. What people think about is that you want, um, yeah, typical counters to Ari are a lot of sort of sustained damage and CC on demand. Like you want Vigar Cage, you want Swain Slow, you want things that are on target that she can't duke with her uh, her ulti, which obviously gives her a lot of a lot of them, um, uh, which gives her a lot of dashes, and she can obviously use it to dodge. Um, so yeah, what, what you want to do that, and Malzahar you would think would be able to do that because he can land his Null Zone and use uh, Nether Grass, Malefic Visions, and hopefully silence her. Oh, we're starting again, I think. CosQ Computer Overload. Want a stat? Uh, computer <laughs> Overload. Um. Oh ha! Okay, so yeah, there we go. Play it. Everyone resume. wants a stat. Yeah, stats are very good. Uh, yes. Went in for the... Oh, Blitz right off the bat. Alright, they were not ready for that one. Tons of damage, taking tons of damage from Spirit of Maid. Will he get this one? Not no. gonna happen. Oh, and Nif will be picking that one up. Nif? Wait, no, not. No, that's there is Sonna. Nif here. There is a... It's because I, I so often see Nif play Sonna, because he is like the Sonna player. It was it was just like, instantly, it was like, that's gotta be Nif. No, it isn't. It's a lesser guest. And uh, I would like to see more of a lesser guest. is because... really risking his life here, though. Sooner yeah, a, yeah and Flash goes go. down by Spirit of Maid, that's the E, he will not get an extra auto attack. Let's just guess turning this one around, Talal coming from the side as well. Spirit of Mage. And Shen from nowhere. Bye. Have a nice yeah. day. Corky clearly did know what was coming, in that he knew he was on the health where a single ult from Trist would have killed him straight off. So he baited her in knowing Shen was coming around. That was a uh, good play, good play, clever. And Tristana, obviously, hook, line, and sinker, I'm afraid. 
uh, not not ideal for her. She she could have just sort of stayed back, made sure that Corky couldn't possibly farm because he was so low, and her threat oh, would have been, been caught by Talon, however, in the enemy jungle, looking to jump over the wall with the wall. There it is, and Cosco not able to follow up with that one. I keep wanting to say Costco because that's a shop. <laughs> it, it is. Uh, but yeah, Chris could have could have forced Corky out, but instead, kind of just wanted to go for the kill. It was, it was a bit greedy, especially if they didn't think about where the flash was up on him. And yeah, she could have just forced it into the tower, lost a lot of farm, and yes, he lost his support, but then they would have either had to have their support farm it, which isn't ideal, or uh, risk death on their AD carry. Definitely. So, at the moment, I'm very interested in top lane, because lately I've been playing a lot of um, top lane Shyvana, Ever since I've I watched the Anguish, I was realised. Okay, so pros do play that. <laughs> Brockley looking in for the pull as well. We'll get that along with the power of his spirit made following with the damage. That was the E as well, looking for the ultimate, and that was a very very easy finish off on Spirit of Mage and Killing Spree for Glucose. Meanwhile, Tom has turned his round two versus one situation going on to Nekadurp, and will he get it? Flame Breath goes down. That'll be another kill. Ooh, this Shivana man, four hundred yeah. one eighty three farm, highest farm in the game. He has so much gold compared to everybody else, and is so strong right now. He's nearly a thousand gold ahead of the closest player on the opposite team, who is Tristana. And Tristana is going to point, reach her point of falling oh, off. Oh, Malzahar once again looking in the bad position. There's the flash into the dash once again from Talol, doing the same thing once again. And Ultimate goes down, potentially picking the kill onto Glucose. It's not going to happen. Talol popping that ultimate, saving his life. And, oh my god, just coordination from Camp right now is absolutely insane. Yeah, they're really, really, just, they're just tearing them apart. Just, every time Shim comes in, he seems to get a kill. Okay, I got this. Yes, but you are Tristana, and you're going to reach the point where you're falling off in the mid-game very soon. Which is not very fortunate, actually. Uh, Corky will remain relevant, and will probably, probably peak in the mid-game, I'd say. I mean, he'll, he'll obviously peak late game like all lady carries, but comparative to Trist, he'll probably be at his peak in the mid game where his abilities are reaching their maximum damage and uh, his uh, her AD is still very weak. So even though she's ahead by what a kill, no two two kills, she won't she won't be as relevant not for a good long while. So yeah, like Spirit of Mage on. Just on, it's kind of like a parabola in like a graph where it peaks at the start, goes down mid, and then goes up again right at the end game. And once again, Gluc has, Glu Glucose has found Brot at top. Very interesting, though, like very odd because Brot has tried to trade with him in a the long times. And meanwhile, bottom, so we're made trading off of Electric Guess. Electric Guess will fall. Rock Jump goes out because of that assist, or in fact, the kill. Tons of Dan following after with the Valkyrie will pick up that kill. Brockley will probably fall here as well, at least to one of those cameras, yeah. and there is a double kill for Corky. What were you saying about peaking mid-game? Hmm. Mm -hmm. And meanwhile, mid-glucose, the kill onto Malzaha. He's just doing work right now. Top lane Shyvana is so strong, and I don't understand why Shyvana wasn't waiting it out. Just simply... Sorry. Oh yeah, I'm two seconds behind. Thank you. I too would fall on two seconds behind, which is rather odd. Yeah, it's because of the pause. Oh, it's yeah. And actually, Glucose going on to Brot, meanwhile, top will get that kill very, very easily. And honestly, Jeez. Brot is just not reacting to this lane very well. I suppose you don't really see too many top lane Shyvanas, but she's just not attacking the right time. She's going in when Shyvana's way stronger, because levels 1 to 5, she is exceptionally strong. And Talon will be picking up a smite before Nekadop can get it. I don't think Nekadop actually got vision of that in time, in fact. Oh, oh and Koski coming around from the corner, chunking off Nekadop with the true damage portion of Orb Deception coming in as well. Will pick up that kill very handily. 15 yep. to 3 right now. Look how far ahead they are. A lot crazy. of gold. Juduk once again. Oh, looking in this horrible position. Lands the charm. And that is a very, very dead Malzahar. And in fact, Koski just doesn't even waiting get to carry the ignite tick. Mm, Classy. Yep. Feeding your kills to your lanes is usually preferable when you're playing someone who doesn't really need gold, like Shen. So, why not? Just let it go. Easy. Exactly, oh, and, and Brockley, yeah exactly, we're Spirit of Mage, Valkyrie has been oh. used, and nice Duke, he will be out of there, and of course Electric Gust is reducing the damage on Brockley with that power cord, 
Because, you know, Blitz Trank known for that massive damage he can output. Um, well, he does actually put out... I don't know if you're being sarcastic or not. Because uh, he actually does put out quite a lot of damage for a support. Yeah, his, with his, his ultimate. ultimate. Yeah, his ultimate is a lot of burst. Um, but yeah, that was good play by Brookley in that he waited to bait out the Valkyrie. Like, he forced Corky into a situation where he was against the wall, so he had no way to duke. And so he had to use Valkyrie to get out of the way. So, it, it, in the event that um, Blitz grabbed at that point. So, he could then just... Uh, I'm sorry, I'm messing up this point. Yeah, okay. He forced Corky into a situation where he couldn't escape a grab if it came, and Corky didn't trust himself to dodge on reaction. So, Corky Valkyrie, and then he went for the grab. That was more or less what I was trying to say. Oh, meanwhile, Miju took popping the ultimate onto Koski. Will he get it? No. Shen going hit with his ultimate will save him barely. Shen, bro. Was ticking down. That was some great reactions on Talo. And meanwhile, bottom electric gets being initiated. A lot of damage going down. However, tons of damage. Outputting tons of damage. Oh. We'll get the kill onto Blitz. Will he get the second one onto Spirit of Maze? Flash goes down. Two auto attacks. Double kill. Goes out. Ooh. And meanwhile... That great start that Trist had. Hmm. <laughs> Ticking off right now, Judok actually taking a lot of damage from Talo and in from behind, Glucose finishes this one off. Judok does not have the ultimate, so he is out of there. New closing, <laughs> losing lane to Cos Q. GG. I. <laughs> Good. Well, yeah, it, it's not a situation they want to be in basically right now. Uh, they are. They're a long way behind, they're in a lot of trouble, they don't really have the power to contest any objectives that are forced. It's just all around really bad, and they're going to have to do something impressive to stop it, basically. He just outplayed me, says Malzahar. Glucose following on Brom, meanwhile, at top. Ultimate is popped as well, looking for the tower dive, kind of nudging him to the side a bit. Friendly little, you know, tap on the back, and now he will be dead. And Nekodo coming in from the side, however, going in with the W, lands the Q, flash over the wall, and will follow up with that. Q was not used, and Shaivana with an awkward face. A uh, huge killing spree bonus. That wasn't worth the dive on Aurelia, who mm. probably by now isn't worth very much gold. She's 0, 06 and 1. Ow. She's been destroyed. And this is what I say, like, you need to take an early advantage against Aurelia and then snowball it so that she can never fight you. Because she is one of these sort of ticking time bomb champions who becomes an unstoppable machine after a certain point. Yeah, it's just about delaying that point, however. Kosky oh my god, the damage with the Deathfire, Deathfire grasp. grasp. Yeah. How much is that chunking off right now? Let's take a look. 31% along with like the ultimate and the rest of it. It's of Mage just doing some poker boss and more than anything. Yeah. Malzahar just doesn't have the magic resist to tank that kind of burst and he can't he barely could even react fast enough but if he gets charmed basically he's dead i i i would hesitate to say that oh koski actually lands Ooh. the charm onto Nekodo. i'm not gonna follow this one despite hitting tower down same point hello catches a spirit of mage he's trying to just return and hit return and hit but he's not actually doing that much damage to tallow ultimate goes down with the crescendo right onto brock lands the uh, blaze surge onto Hello, but this will be an easy blue, I think, in case Nekotop can well, smite, smite steal this. Yeah. Nah, it's not gonna happen. It yeah, normally what you'd expect to see in a Malzahar lane is Malzahar hitting you with Null Zone, hitting you with Malefic Visions, hitting you with the Silence, hitting you with Nether Grasp, and you're dead. Instead, you're getting pretty much the reverse, where Ari lands a charm, ults, and by the time by the time the charm wears off Mal's, he's dead. Yep. Death fire and ulti, he's just gone out of there. Don't even have time to flash. Nice thing with Ari in comparison to a lot of mages is she can get her burst out during her CC. So her kit synergizes well with itself because it's like two seconds, in that two seconds you can get all of your burst off. With Malzahar, he doesn't really have like the hard CC before he's got the nether grasp. Like he has to land it before his CC, which is always the issue. And yeah. uh, tons of damage potentially baited out here by Spirit of Mage. They're trying to capitalize on this, but Judo coming in from the side. Broccoli there as well. Nethergrass goes down along with the Malefic Vision. Jumps on him and ultimately goes down by Spirit of Mage to pick that one up. Another rocket jump goes down with the reset. Electric Guess being chased down. Will he get the kill? He's two more auto attacks. One more. One more. She'll just wait for the rocket jump, surely. Broccoli just... Going in, misses it, Talon oh, coming in as well. Will he get there in time? No, he will not. Breaks with the shoot too quickly. Talon coming in from the side, however. Dux and Kozuki, they waited too long. 
and that will be the kill easily on to oh. Blitzcrank. Want to get onto Glucos? And <laughs> Shiv just insta gibbs to Spirit of Mage there. And Judah just recalling in the bush. It's fine. <laughs> and there's an open dragon, and I think the dragon is going to be taking it. Yeah, the call on the TS apparently was Shem will be top mid S <laughs> mid SS. Ouch. Yeah, that, that's always an awkward moment when you make a call and um, and it turns out to be very wrong. This is actually why a lot of people don't like to make calls when they're on a team. Because being wrong is so much more painful than it is successful to be right. Yes. I kind of end up admiring people who are actually ballsy enough to say, this is what we should do, and then take it on the chin if it goes wrong. Oh, oh the damage onto Judok, and Ooh, once again dear. just caught. Every time he's just being caught. And it's just, I think all of his deaths have just been being caught rather than actual trades. More yeah, than anything. But it, to be fair, and it's just... all goes down by Brockley landing onto Talos, taking a lot of damage, and returning the favor straight onto Brot. That is a tanky Irelia. Brockley also being sliced down by Glucose, also goes down straight on to Necadum. He will also be falling, also goes down by Spirit of Mage, kind of saving Glucose from the tower. Tons of damage, now putting tons of damage wow. onto. They just of mage. absolutely shredded, and there's the surrender vote. Yeah. There was no way they could come back from that. They just. Shivana so far ahead, and so was everyone else, really. GG, well played, coming from both teams. And that will be the victory. Quite comfortable as well. They did have mm. a stand in, of course. Brot was uh, standing in for someone on the TT Dragons. Mm. But a shame, even so, that. Yeah, that is the end of the game. So. Anyway, guys, uh, just a quick reminder of the prizes up for grabs. If you donate just one dollar, you have the chance to win a parachute jump with Ocelot, Moma, Nif, and Nekadur. Parachute not provided. And you will also have five dollars. If you donate five dollars or more, you have the chance to win one of five, one, 500 t-shirts. 150 t-shirts, support or feed. At the moment, I believe there's about 15 contributors, so you have 100% chance to win a t-shirt, which I think is pretty we think. good. We think. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're not sure how that works at the moment. We'll have to ask an admin. But for now, we'll be signing off. Last remarks, buddy, before we go to the next game. That game was just a collapse in the lanes, I'm afraid. Almost every single lane lost. And the the only one that did okay scaled off in mid-game. And then they just pushed on that advantage mid-game and never got to late. Yeah, definitely. So anyway, guys, stay tuned. We'll be back soon.